It seems if everyone had a movie that, as a child, he or she would watch over and over again. Whether it be a DVD, a VHS tape, or even an old-fashioned film canister, these films would wear out long before their childhoods concluded. For boys, it was usually something adventurous and full of action like The Sword in the Stone or Aladdin. And for girls, it was usually a movie with a princess as a role model, like The Little Mermaid or Beauty and the Beast. Now what do all these films have in common? They're Disney animated motion pictures, of course. For decades, these masterpieces have been a household name for family entertainment. It's no wonder why our children we would constantly watch these, such as myself and The Brave Little Toaster. Wait, that's a Disney film? Well, yeah, technically it is. Okay, maybe some backstory is needed. In 1980, renowned poet and science fiction novel writer Thomas Stish wrote a children's book called The Brave Little Toaster, A Bedtime Story for Small Appliances. And in case you're wondering, he also wrote The Brave Little Toaster Goes to Mars, so that's a book adaptation too, not a quick sequel to cash in like Disney is known for. Seven years later, a full-length anime film was created by the combined efforts of Hyperion Pictures and the Kushner Lock Company, which then premiered at the Los Angeles International Animation Celebration. While viewers, critics, and distributors enjoyed the movie, none of them would accept it for marketing, dismissing it as a kid's cartoon not to be taken seriously. Enter Disney, who considered it perfect for the lineup of their latest creation, The Disney Channel, which aired on February 27, 1988 on cable. The movie was then distributed on VHS and Laserdisc and throughout the 90s became a rental favorite and sort of a cult classic. So how does it hold up? Is it as beloved as Dumbo and Peter Pan, or is the outdated rubbish like the contraptions it stars? Well, in a sense, it did help shape Disney history. Its screenplay was by John Raft and its storyboard artist was John Lasseter. If these are familiar names, it's because they're devoted members of none other than Pixar. Think about it. An animate object's coming to life when there are no humans in the room? Sounds like their first full-length project, Toy Story. Going the distance to be reunited with your loved ones? It's kind of like Finding Nemo. Talking cars? Eh, the less I say about that, the better. There's even a cute reference to A113, which is the room number for graphic design and character animation at the California Institute of the Arts. This number appears in every Pixar film, and even other media such as The Simpsons. Okay, I've talked long enough about its legacy. Let's begin the movie itself. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It starts off in a cottage inhabited by five appliances. A childish yet endearing electric blanket called Blanky, voiced by Timothy E. Day. But I don't want a new master. A snarky but enthusiastic desk lamp named Lampy, voiced by Tim Stack. Holy mother of Edison! What were you thinking? You might have broken my bulb! An annoying and entertaining radio, voiced by John Lovitz. Sorry folks, we seem to be experiencing a little technical difficulty. But... Get that off my show! A grumpy, powerful vacuum cleaner named Kirby after the brand, voiced by Ferl Ravenscroft. I just know I'm gonna regret this. And their leader, a generally confused but brave little toaster, voiced by Deanna Oliver. Well, at least we try to be optimistic. They're unhappy because they haven't seen the human who owned them, whom they referred to as their master, in a long time and hope one day he'll be in one of the cars that occasionally drives by. They're mocked by the house's air conditioner, who's voiced by the late Phil Hartman. It's been years. It's scrap metal time. Your soul is an appalling dump heap, overflowing with the most disgraceful assortment of deplorable rubbish imaginable, mangled up in tangled up knots. Scared there, Kirby. What are you gonna do? Suck me to death? Kiki! Look, it's me! And here's where I'm going to make two points about this movie. The first one is the dialogue. It's actually really clever in how the characters address each other as if they're made of raw materials and parts rather than flesh and blood. What is it with you guys anyway? You act like you just came off the assembly line. Now get this through your chrome. And now for my second point. Some parts of this movie are scary. Like, seriously, I remember running out of my living room and into my guest room when I saw this. So after... that, a for sale sign appears around the cottage, and they decide their only option is to go and find the master themselves. This is the bulk of the movie, and they experience all sorts of insane obstacles. My favorite is easily when they are stuck in a spare parts store alongside deformed appliances that sing. Oh god, I'm a fish mug. Hi, Judy Toll. Soon they find the master, who is all grown up and ready to go to college. Hmm, I'm sorry, but I have to make a connection to Toy Story 3. Turns out he needs some simple supplies and our heroes would do nicely. Oops. The modern equipment throws him out and everybody meets up at the junkyard when the TV convinces the master to go find them. 
This is where we get to the depressing reality of trash on death row. It's a long way, but eventually the master and his belongings are finally reunited and drive off into the distance. So how does the movie stand? I can see why people lose interest and many people have called juvenile, but life is just taken way too seriously sometimes. The Brave Little Toast reminds us that family and friends are the most important matters and not paving the way for the future like the 20th century was so obsessed in doing. It has a lot of unique imagery to offer that I didn't even show you, and I hope you have tons of fun watching it. Most people I see it with remember seeing it once or twice when they were very young, so it's an interesting experience of viewing it from two completely different perspectives and age. After all, isn't that what Disney is about?